Well, it looks like they're surveying some land here. And that little bit of land happens to be an easement in between two houses there. Uh, there's a relatively large woods behind this neighborhood that eventually gets back to the Ohio Turnpike. And there's the easement in between those two properties was used, or they set it aside in case somebody wanted to put a road to go and build something back there. Well, it floods all the time, so they're not really going to be able to build much back there. But the Ohio Metro Parks here around here bought that land. So I guess they're surveying it to figure out what they want to do with it. So that's good. It's going to be good for property value. At least we know that. Anyways, today's Thursday. It's a beautiful 40 degrees in the garage. 23 degrees out here, shifting down a gear. Welcome. And as I told you a couple days ago, I've got to be down at Jeff's at 2 o'clock. Uh, I'm leaving at 1.25 or so today. Only have two classes, which is great. I have um, English and Ecology, which are both usually relatively simple. So. That is good news. All right, well, we're here, and it's Thursday, so I'm gonna go have a short day, and I'll talk to you in a little bit when I come out, and we hop on 77 South and go down there and see if they can fix my lights, so talk to you in a bit. All right, done, I had to stop downtown here to get my camera out of the trunk. Uh, it's 1.35, I'm gonna head down there now, and uh, I'll let you know when we get down to Jeff's and Canton, hopefully it is before two. En route, about uh, five minutes in or so, making good time. And uh, it is a very nice day. It's only 38 degrees, but uh, it is very sunny, so we'll take it. Well, this is the place I always film down here where we stopped taking the Ferrari down a couple years ago. Uh, a bunch of restaurants and crap, car dealers, McDonald's, Bob Evans, Gas, Target, you see Walmart, Honda dealer, Van de Veer, Kia. But we're still headed down to Canton. It is four minutes until uh, two, so I'm probably going to be about four minutes late. But uh, we got into some traffic. The speed limit drops to 55. It's usually 65, which means you're going 75. Uh, but it drops to 55, and there, one of the lanes was closed down, so we slowed down for a little bit. But now, we're back up and going, so we'll be there shortly. Yeah, it's 2.06. We made it. There's a X5M over there with the quad-tipped exhaust and a Z4 here. And some nice Mercedes back there, so I'll go in and see what they have to say. There's that Z4M, looks really nice. Anyways, it's just uh, 2.48 now, as I shift gears. Uh, so I was there about 45 minutes or so, and they put the diagnostics on it, and it is a sensor that is uh, failed or is malfunctioning somewhere in the car. However, it's not an OEM sensor, uh, and they only do OEM stuff there. So believe it or not, they actually told me to take it to the, the official BMW dealer, Dave Walter. BMW and let them do it since they installed the lights a year ago, October. Uh, so I guess I'll have to schedule an appointment, and get it back over there sometime soon, and uh, we'll we'll figure it out. Got uh, aircraft coming in to uh, Akron Canton Airport right there. There it is. Kind of hard to see in frame. So that would be Akron Canton Airport over there. I've never flown in or out of it, but uh, Kenan did on his way to Italy. I think he went from there to Atlanta and from Atlanta to. Italy, and then on the way back, I think they, yeah, they came in there on the way back, too, from Detroit or some abstract place, so, yep, back again. Well, it is definitely time to get gas. My range is 39 miles. The light comes on at 50, so I'm going to stop at the station on my way home. I don't really have any homework to do tonight. Actually, I need to read something. I need to read three sections of a history chapter for a quiz tomorrow, but aside from that, I don't think there's a whole lot to do, so... I'll, uh, I'll find you at the gas station 
and we'll see how many monies it'll take to fill this big up. There we go, 16.74 gallons in an 18 gallon tank. Yep. All right, 345, just got off the phone with a rep over at Dave Walter BMW. Their next available appointment, appointment is next Friday. Unless I go right now. <laughs> so, so I just talked to my dad. He wants to go along this time. That looks awkward. I'm trying to pull my laptop out of my bag. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to go there at 5. I'm going to pick my dad up at 4.30, which means I need to leave in 15 minutes. So I have like five emails. I need to get back to customer reps or, you know, business people. And uh, then I'm going to go. All right, it's uh, 3.59. I'm headed over to get my dad now. I'm leaving a couple minutes early, so I'll take it easy on the way over there. But it's still nice. It's a balmy 40 degrees. And uh, surprisingly, we have sun. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 39 and relatively sunny too. Uh, but we're definitely out of the 50s. We are into the 30s and 40s now with snow. And pretty soon, everything will be white. Um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about global warming. If you don't want to listen to the little rant here, it won't be too long, then just go ahead and skip along. Skip, skip, skip hopping down the bunny trail. Easter's on its way. Yeah, so the winters around here used to be, you know, come November, we'd be in solid 30s and 40s. Then it would snow early December. And with the exception of maybe five days, everything would everything on the ground would be white from mid-December into March. We really wouldn't see the grass and the snow, or the grass and the dirt and the mud and all the shit very much. But in the last two to three years, and it's been getting worse every year, uh, snow, we don't really get that much snow anymore. It'll snow maybe a lot and we'll have it for a week, but then it goes back down to the dead grass and the dirt and all the ugly crap that I don't want to see. I would rather have it white. I'd rather have snow, a little bit of snow every night maybe to keep it fresh or you know, something like that. Um, but recently we don't have that. It's either dirt and mud or snow that lasts a couple days until it melts off. So the weather is definitely changing. Call it what you want, but I believe it's global warming. You can't tell me Earth's been here for 4.6 billion years. We've had vehicles on the planet for about a hundred and some years now. And of course we have more now than ever, and more tomorrow than today. Uh, with China and pretty much every country, uh, every main country is very uh, automotive slash combustion engine dependent. And with all the emissions of these cars, there's, there's got to be some effect. And I think that we're seeing that right now. The weather on the scale of the globe, I think, has astronomically changed in the past several years. Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, whatever you may be, you've got to admit that there's been changes. Uh, I mean, flooding and all of the snow that they had in Vermont. Um, I'm just talking about the United States, really, but over in Japan, that huge tsunami, yes, disasters happen, shit happens, but there's been a lot more natural disasters um, recently than there ever have been, at least as far as I'm concerned and as, as much as I know about it, which I'm not a scientist, but I can open my eyes and look around me and watch some news once in a while, right? So uh, what do you think? Do you think that global warming is true? Is it BS? I have seen Al Gore's The Inconvenient Truth. It was a phenomenal movie. Um, and I think there's a lot of good points in there. There may be some BS in there too. You know, it's a movie. There's BS in every movie. But um, let me know what you think. Kind of a controversial topic. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about abortion tomorrow. So tune in then. Well, on the subject of uh, global warming and cars and uh, alternative fuel sources, that's the big thing I want to talk about right now uh, for a minute, is alternative fuel sources. You know, we've been using combustion engines for, what I say, over 100 years or so. Um, and more recently, there's been big pushes to try to go to diesel, E85, hydrogen, electric power, um, and none of those have really taken off and replaced in large quantities combustion engines, meaning engines that run on gasoline, and spark and fire and output, the harmful stuff in the back. Um, so what what is it going to be? You know, hydrogen I think is good, however it's kind of a bomb on wheels, you've got to be careful. It's a little bit more expensive than gas, however it only outputs water. So. That's really good, but it's a little bit expensive. I think it's the Honda FCX Clarity that is the hydrogen car. Top Gear had it, and they liked it. 
Uh, I think the range was good uh, on hydrogen, but where are you gonna get hydrogen? Hydrogen fuel cells and you've got problems with that. Electric power, well, think about where electricity come from. comes from. It's coal, it's burned chemicals in the atmosphere. That's, that's what the problem is. Gas, not chemicals, it is chemicals, but it's gas. Um, so electric power isn't maybe the way to go. Diesel, well, it's not a whole lot different than gas. I don't, BMW's got some diesel engines right now, which is good. Uh, actually, BMW and Toyota have sparked a partnership. Um, BMW is gonna give Toyota diesel engines, and Toyota is gonna help BMW out with hybrid technology. I, I think the, the Toyota Prius is the best hybrid vehicle right now. Um, it's a good car. I don't know that I would buy one, but I honestly do think that it is a good car. Um, so I don't know where it's going to go. I think we have a long road ahead of us before we can make anything that's going to be as powerful, as reliable, as, uh, as good as a combustion engine in terms of a driving vehicle. Um, and then the whole thing with combustion engines, they've gotten so much better. Even this car, this is an M5. This is a 400 horsepower car that I don't think they tried very hard at all to make fuel efficient. Yet, if I go over to the onboard display, I get about 23.7 miles to the gallon. Now, I just recalculated that an hour ago. This has all been city driving. That's pretty good for a car like this. Uh, anyways, that's my rant. I apologize I've taken up so much of this video, but again, let me know your thoughts. What do you think is the next source of, of power to run vehicles on? Plus, I don't think in my lifetime I'm ever going to see a day when I can't go somewhere within a relatively close distance of wherever I live and buy gasoline. I think we're always going to have on the road in somewhere cars that are powered by gasoline. Even if they stop making gas cars in five years from now, which it would be longer than that if they found the magic key today. Um, to, al to alternative fuel sources. But I think there's always going to be people, uh, and I may be one of them, that want a rear-wheel drive, six-speed car that you have to put gas in, because that's just where it's at. I have never seen a Toyota in that kind of condition. It looks like an old Camry, maybe, a uh, Corolla DX. I have never seen one with that much body rust. Florida! Well, we're back in the valley, and it looks pretty hazy out there, so now I guess we have Akron smog. Great. It's different. Um, you know, I like yeah. it because it looks different, and, and it's, it's a nice looking car. It's that 8.3 liter 10 cylinder? Yeah, holy it, crap. It's a 10. Yeah, but it's not 8.3 liters. No, no, that is 6. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Well, somebody's day just got dicked. Okay, it's 9.30. Uh, we got back from Dave Walter. That Viper was actually at Dave Walter. They took it in on trade for a H1 Hummer, which they took in on trade for an X6M. So that's what's going on with that. Anyways, they had the car at the BMW dealer in the back showroom. Uh, not showroom, kind of a garage, I guess you'd call it, uh, from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. It went in at like 4.58 and it came out at 7.03 or something like that, I mean, just two hours. And uh, they had, they were working pretty much the whole time on it. They took uh, most of the trim off of the passenger side, took the glove box out, now that's screwed up, it doesn't close right, but he was in a hurry to put it back together because they closed at 7. Um, so I'm gonna have a look at that when it's in. We ordered the part. It is it is a BMW OEM part that is way under the um, glove box, which is there. It's like down in here, and they can't get it from the hood, so they have to get it from in there. It's a circuit board in there. Something the moisture got in there somehow from humidity or whatever, and uh, fried part of that board. And when one of them, there's one on each side to level the lights when you turn it on. And when one of those boards is fried and it shorts sometimes, that's why they were intermittent in terms of when they would and would not work. Um, so we had to order the new board. They, car they charged $111 for the two hours and diagnostics today. So that's not terrible. You know, it's only like $57 an hour. Um, the part itself is $600, um, including, well, including installation of that part. So the total bill for this is going to be about $750. So Merry Christmas. But they ordered that part today. They said it'll be in by the end of next week and I can get it in in the car hopefully by the end of next week if not very early the next week so it'll be good to get that done they'll fix my glove box right when they put that back in and uh, that's where it stands so it'll be good to get it fixed it's not the headlights fault I assume that since they're non OEM lights they probably failed but they didn't it's a OEM BMW part that failed deep within the loins of the glove box so that will be fixed and then it will work again 
checking the thermometer of bad news, it is very, 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 very inaccurate. Outside, it thinks it is 72 degrees. And let me tell you, it is not 72 degrees. Inside, it is more accurate at 42 degrees. But even so, it feels colder than that. I'm freezing. So I'm going inside. I need to read those three chapters. I'm going to put this together. I apologize that it's very long. And I'll talk to you tomorrow on Friday. Good night.